welcome back to my channel. My name is Meg and today I'm going to show you how to get this radioactive crystal skull look. I am so obsessed with how this turned out. I'm like nervous that it's going to all fall off my lips right now as I'm talking, but I, I mean, I finished the look, so what's the matter? Anyways, I'm obsessed with how this turned out. I think it looks super glamorous, obviously, because of the crystals. I also used a lot of glitter today, and I also think it looks really cool and like electric and maybe even radioactive looking with the colors that I went with. I really love a good blue green storyline. I show you how to do every step. Before we get started into the tutorial, be sure to smash that subscribe button so you don't miss out on my future content. Um, I believe I will be putting up a very last minute Halloween costume idea on Halloween in the morning because basically every week, if you're new here, I've been showing you a new skull tutorial every single week. So I will have my Halloween playlist linked down below and it also has all my looks from years past in it. So be sure to check it out if you are new. But yeah, I think one last Halloween look to go, and I'm already so excited for Halloween next year. I have a lot big plans. I want to film a lot more videos. So leave me a comment down below. What is your favorite thing about Halloween or the fall season? I would love to hear from you. Or are you just ready to fast forward to the Christmas and Thanksgiving holidays? Let me know. I would love to hear from you guys, and let's jump into it. I'm going to be taking two colors from the Thirsty palette and the first one is Splash and I love this. It's kind of like, I think the perfect way to describe it is a Squidward color. <laughs> I'm taking in Morphe M433 and I didn't set my base so I just laid down my Tarte Shape Tape and I'm just going to stamp this on into the shape that I want and then we can work on blending after we have the color laid down. I don't like setting my base because it's going to bring out the most pigmentation from the shadow because when you set your base with a cream color or a translucent powder is going to put a veil on top of the concealer if that makes sense so it's going to kind of dim the shadows that you're putting on top of it um, for a regular smoky eye i'm fine setting it with the translucent powder but when i work with colors i like leaving the base tacky I'm also working the shadow, the edge of it, into a wing because I really want to smoke out and wing out the shadow. So to smoke out the edges of that and then to fill in the inner corner of my eye, I'm going to go into submerge in this blue. It is just such the prettiest light blue, like cloud, like cloudy sky blue. I just think it's absolutely beautiful. So I'm just taking another Morphe M433 and again tapping it around my socket, blending it into splash, and then I'll also work on blending out the edge. As you can see, now that the color is laid down, you can go ahead and blend the edge lightly. I'm using hardly any pressure with my hand at the back of the brush. Um, it's just a lot easier to blend the shadows back and forth and in circular motions once you already have the main majority of it laid down. So here I'm just kind of outlining the very top of the edge of splash and underneath with that submerged color. I just took a dab of my NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer and I'm burning it, blending it out with my Real Techniques um, Deluxe Crease Brush. I'm going to smoke this out quite a bit so I'm taking Submerge first because it's lighter and I'm heavily placing this on the outer corner of my eye about halfway um, right where my pupil is all the way to the outer corner and then I'm going to take Splash which is the Squidward color and put that on my inner corner. You can smoke this out as much as you want and the whole thing with doing your eyes first is that if you accidentally blend it out too much or smoke it down too low you can always clean it up with your foundation or concealer later. Going back into Submerge, I'm kind of pinching my brush to make it a little bit flatter and I'm just going to start really winging out that color and building up that wing. I want this to project out towards my temple. Submerge is really taking over the game here, so I'm just going back in with Splash and just putting that about halfway onto my lid because I will be cutting the crease and I'm also building that color into the crease as well. 
Moving along over to my Morphe 12P, I'm taking this true green color on a larger pencil brush, and I'm just gonna work on blending this on the very outer edge of my lid and on the outer corner of my crease, all the way to the inner corner, because I'll be cutting the crease later, and I definitely wanna make sure I have that darkness and depth in the very inner corner too. So it's totally fine to get shadow on your lid at this point, and it's just gonna add a little bit of depth to the look. With the Real Techniques accent brush, I'm gonna darken up and smoke up the lower lash line too. So I'm just taking that same green color and dragging that from outer corner to inner corner on my lash line, and that's the key. I'm really keeping this as focused to the lash line as possible, and I'm not really blending it out or smoking it out a lot. I wanted a touch more depth and drama, so I'm just taking the black from the Morphe 12P palette, and I'm using this in my crease on a Morphe G24. Um, I specifically use this one because I know it's not super pigmented and super like wabam, super black right off the bat. This is more of a blendable and buildable black shadow because I didn't want it to be too intense. So that is why I chose the black shadow out of the Morphe palette. But again, same process from outer corner to inner corner. I'm just going to blend it up in there. I also wanted to smoke out my lower lash line, so again, on that accent brush, I picked up the teeniest bit of black shadow, and I'm just really stamping it as close to my lash line and waterline as humanly possible, because again, I don't want the black shadow to get out of control. Less is more when working with black shadow. I have been wanting to master the cut crease, so I'm doing one here in this video. Hopefully it can help you out. So I'm just taking a concealer brush from Sephora, and the trick that I use is that I just follow my natural eye shape. So I just dig it in right where my eye starts to divot into my socket and trace along that in one foul swoop. That is, a, I think, the key to mastering a cut crease is to just do it in one line rather than slowly building it up. And then you can take what is ever left and drag it across your lid. I brought mine about three-fourths across my lid and I just use my Tarte Shape Tape for this because it is pretty opaque. It is time to level this eye look up with some glitter. Um, to be honest, I probably didn't need to lay down the cut crease with the concealer because this does a pretty good job of being really, really opaque. This is the Stila Magnificent Glitter Glow in Diamond Dust. And I'm just going straight through with the applicator and just following along the line that I already have down and using that as a guide. So I want this to be super opaque, super compacted. So I'm really going to pile the product on. With this, if you pile too much on, it can flake. So I would say one to two layers and you should be good and of course I want to blend this but before it dries so I'm just going back in with that Real Techniques uh, crease brush that I use for my concealer and I'm just lightly dragging the glitter out to blend it into the splash shadow I seriously love how glitter can transform a look and of course you want this to dry down before you go blinking your eyeballs around so a handheld fan is your best friend to finish off the top half of the eyes, all I did was add a very thin line of liquid liner in my Ardell Wispy Lashes. And here I'm taking my brow pencil and I'm gonna start to do a rough sketch of where I want my cheekbones cut. So when I put my foundation on, a faint line will still be there as a guide. I definitely wanna make sure that this is pretty even before I get the rest of my face on. You don't have to do this, it's just a guide to help you along. To catch you up, I use my Clinique Even Better Foundation, which I have a review on, so the shameless plug will be up above. And I just used a bunch of highlighter. I used my Becca Moonstone and Ofra Glaze Donut, mainly my Ofra Glaze Donut. And I just went ahead and used contour and bronzer on my forehead and on my nose. And here I am going back in with my brow pencil just to like redefine the cheekbone area because now we're finally starting to get to the skull part. So you just want to make sure you're taking taking your time, looking far away to make sure everything looks even. You definitely want to use your own bone structure to your advantage here. So I'm stopping that line about where my teeth stop. 
And here I am going down to finish off the bottom part of the jaw. I'm not gonna go all the way down my mouth. I'm just gonna stop about there. And here I am trying to visualize to see where things started and where things finished on the other side of my face. Once you're happy with how things are looking, all you have to do is round that off to close off that area. That is the only area on the skull today that I'm going to fill in with a solid black. The rest, we're gonna get into some fun colors. I just quickly outlined that in a black liquid liner and now I'm going to go into my Morphe 12P and we're going to start off darkest and work our way to lightest. So I'm going to go back in with that true green color and again using a blending brush I'm just going to blend all around what we just outlined. With this green color you just want to extend it slightly further than where we closed it off. We're not going to round that off right there because that's where our teeth are going to end up running into. So just the top and bottom outline of the jaw area and you can just, you know, blend this out to how you like it. You guessed it, next is splash. And then once I get splash laid down, I'm gonna move on to submerge just so I don't have to keep holding the palette up. So here I'm just gonna blend 50% on where the green color is and 50% on new skin to help blend it. And here where we get that little round area, that little hump, kind of like where our cheekbone is starting to form, I definitely want to make sure that I'm emphasizing that curve there and that we don't lose the shape of the jawbone and cheekbone. Now that we are going to be going a little bit lighter with color with Submerge, it's going to start to bring out some highlighty areas, so I'm going to start to blend this up towards my temple. So right now, that's kind of where I'm focusing on depositing the color. Again, you definitely want to be blending into your hairline to help it look more realistic, as realistic as a colorful skull makeup gets. And I'm also going to wing out my eyeshadow even further to have it almost meet up with my temple area and it's the same process again I'm just lightly blending the edge of where splash ends with submerge so we get a really nice gradient and I'm also going to start bringing the lighter colors a little bit further down towards the mouth not a lot just the hair in a shocking twist of events, I'm gonna be using a new color. This is the Lime Green from the 12P palette, and I'm just taking a different blending brush, and we're going to get to highlight in. So, same process again, half on Submerge, half on the new territory, and I am gonna bring this up even further, really focus it into my temple area. I mentioned earlier that I use glazed donut for my highlight and I really, really packed it on because I love the glow that's gonna peek through because even though we're putting this green color on top of now where our highlight area is, the highlight is still gonna shine through underneath the green shadow. Of course, you can always add more on top if you wish, but I just love this glowy effect. I just really think that it helps tie into the story of the glam factor with the glitter on the eyes. I definitely want to add this to the color story of our eye makeup. I knew I wanted to do this at the beginning, but I didn't know how it would pair, so I just wanted to wait until I got the green on my face. So I'm just taking hardly any of the lime green. I don't think I really picked up any new product, and I'm just lightly grazing the edge of my eyeshadow. I wanted to marry the eyeshadow into the actual skull look, so I'm just going to further blend this and kind of swoop it in a C motion up into the lime green and connect it that way. Doing this kind of gets rid of the harshness of the wing and just makes it look more cohesive in my opinion. I wanted to bring this down to my jawline, so I'm just repeating the process. I'm just taking that original darker green from the Morphe palette and just using that as my main contour under my chin and then I'm gonna blend it out with the two colors from the Thirsty palette and the Lime Green. Using the Lime Green here also ties it in to the bottom part of the jaw, so it just wraps everything all together nicely. Again, with the lime green, just doing some finishing touches, I'm lightly skimming the outer edge of my lower lash line too and blending that up into the temple. Once 
Once you're happy with how the colors are looking, it is time to move on to the teeth. So I'm going to sort of outline my teeth with my black liquid liner. Oh, I also fill that area in with a matte black shadow. For the matte black shadow, I use 13th Floor by Urban Decay. I love their matte blacks because like they're like super like pitch black. So that's, you know, I talked about the purpose of the Morphe shadow not being as pigmented. So just because a black shadow isn't super pigmented doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. You can use it for different things. And now I'm rambling. And Luna is just directly passed out on the bed behind me. So the trick with teeth is that you want to apply the most pressure at the bottom and then pick up pressure as you're going up because teeth is the trickiest part for me. This is the best way to explain it. So you definitely want to be pushing down and then letting go and swooping it up. Now it is time to build some color to the teeth. So I'm just going over that line with the darkest green shadow and I'm using that accent brush again. And I'm kind of trying to, you know, drift off with my pressure near the top is a little bit harder to control with shadow and this is a little bit tedious and takes a little bit more time but it's just worth it because it's just such a cool effect. To add some fun color depth and dimension I'm just packing on that lime green on that blending brush and just going right along the edge of my mouth or the edge of my teeth. You guessed it, back into the Thirsty palette for Submerge, which is a light blue color. And I'm just using that same brush I used on my lower lash line, and I'm just gonna start blending that up from the lime green in between each tooth. Now that we are starting to wrap up, it is the time to see what details you need to work on. So for me, I wanted to blend and smoke out that black shadow into that dark green. So I'm just taking my blending brush and just lightly blending around that just to add a little bit more depth and dimension. And again, a gradient effect for the nose. So here I am, I'm just stamping on the lime green because that's going to be on the very outer edges. And then we're gonna work on making things smaller, the rest of the shadows that we use. So to get to the bridge of my nose, I just pinched my brush and just outlined the shape like that. Then I went in with Submerge, which ironically made that splash color, so I could skip over that one. I'm going back in with the glitter because again, I had this idea when I first started, but I wanted to get everything else on my face and you know, not have it be too much accidentally, but I felt like the eyes were a little bit undone. So I'm just dragging that glitter right into my lower lash line and just really smoking out that inner corner of my lower lash line. At this point, I wasn't sure if crystals would work out on my nose, and I just wanted to give you a diff different option anyways in case you're not going to be using gemstones or crystals. Um, so I definitely wanted to glam up the nose and teeth, so I'm just taking that same glitter product and just really packing it on the nose, and then I'm going to put it on each tooth. I smoked out the lower lash line a hair more on the outer edge with a black eyeshadow and added some mascara, poked myself in the eye, got it on my contact, like the genius I am, added some weight to my waterline, and here we are. For the jewels, gems, crystals, whatever you would prefer to call them, I just picked them up from my local craft store for about $4 for a pack of 300 in various sizes. And for my teeth, I definitely want to make sure that they were stuck on there. I wasn't sure if glitter glue would do the trick, so I used lash glue. I put the tiniest amount, and the worst part is waiting for it to dry and your hands getting very sticky and full of lash glue. So I just let them get tacky and then stuck them on, and that's about it for that process. Wabam! Mouth of Diamonds. Now it is time to crystallize the nose. I was 100% sure this wasn't going to work, but I'm just using my NYX Glitter Primer, and I'm just going to smudge that all over the glitter that is already on my nose. So realistically, I didn't need to do this step, but I wasn't sure how things would turn out, so now you get to see both ways. So I'm just tapping this on the area where I want the gemstones to stick down. I went down a size in the gemstones, and now you're gonna watch me stick them on my nose. I didn't have to put anything on the back of the stones, they just stuck right onto my nose. Yeah. 
Now I'm thinking, all right, not bad, not bad, but what else can I do? I kind of had it in my mind that I wanted to incorporate the stones into my eyes somehow, but I just wasn't sure. So I decided to go for it anyways. Um, so I'm just taking more of that NYX glitter primer and putting that on the outer corner of my eyelid. And I'm just gonna stick on three of the smallest stones and a little triangle. Ah, how cute is that? I am obsessed with how this turned out. Oh my gosh. I just feel so fancy and like I'm dripping in glitter. Oh my gosh, we are finally here at the end of the video. This was so worth everything that I put into it. Um, it was fairly simple to do. It's just with these looks, I never know how they're going to turn out as I'm doing them. So it always takes me a little bit longer. I feel like I could probably do this entire look in about an hour and a half to two hours. Um, so not terribly bad. I think that this would be good for parties. Just make sure you really glue it down and just be okay with the fact that your teeth might fall off. I feel like I can't really smile or make that great of facial expressions. But talking, surprisingly, I was nervous at first, but it's not that bad. Um, obviously, you would have difficulty eating, but I just think that this looks so pretty and so cool. Don't forget to subscribe if you have it on your way out, you know, so you can come back. I do put out two beauty videos a week and also a weekly vlog, so you know you want to see more from me. So in that case, check out these videos right down here. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye, everyone.